Raheem Sterling, Jaden Sancho, or Federico Chiesa? What was the best bit of business done in the last 48 hours of the transfer window? Of course, the transfer window is finished. The Premier League is back today. Arsenal versus Brighton, West Ham versus Manchester City. Tomorrow, Man United versus Liverpool and Newcastle versus Tottenham. A jam-packed. Premier League weekend. If you're new to the channel, please do go down, hit that subscribe button. The road to 25,000 subscribers is well and truly on, and we are 306 subscribers away from 22,000. And yesterday we hit more than a thousand likes on two of the videos. Not expecting anywhere near that. I know, I know it was deadline day. I know a lot of people were happy, but you know what? I'm going to be somewhat ambitious. If we get it 500 likes. That would be absolutely glorious. Um, we're talking about the deadline day signings. And I want to talk about three signings throughout the transfer window that I think got a lot of traction for different reasons. We'll start with Raheem Sterling. Some, some are coming out calling it an Edu masterclass. Now, if you take the Raheem Sterling in isolation, you're bringing in a player who's got bundles of Premier League experience. He's won four league titles, five league cups, an FA Cup, two charity shields. He's played in Champions League finals. He's played in World Cups. He's played in Euros. He brings so much experience to that Arsenal team. And there'll be players, you know, you saw Arsenal last season in the Champions League against Bayern Munich, and you could see Odegaard and a few players were nervous. And you can ask players like Sterling, what was it like in this situation? Because he's been there, seen it and done it. Alongside Kai Havertz, he was in that same Champions League final. And I think overall, it's a great bit of business. One, there is no loan fee, which is fantastic for Arsenal. Two, they're paying less than 50% of the wages for Raheem Sterling. Three, he's a Premier League proven player. Four. It's a straight loan. So it doesn't, if it doesn't work out, he will go back and be a Chelsea player. And five, what it then does is it means in 12 to 18 months' time, let's say 12 months' time, if they don't want him, they can move on to a priority target, a Victor Jokirez, a Nico Williams, or bring in someone of the likes of maybe a um of maybe a Victor Ossiman. But on the signing, I think it's a fantastic bit of business. Another signing that happened on deadline day and will be confirmed later today is Jaden Sancho. He's joined from Manchester United. A lot of Man United fans absolutely fuming. The deal is 100% done. Loan with an obligation to buy it formally if Chelsea uh, will finish among the first 14 positions in the Premier League table, which you'd imagine take clearly will. Fee starts from 20 million guaranteed up to 25 million add ons based on performances. So, 45 million pounds for Jaden Sancho, a London boy, come out of Watford Academy. Um, of course, wanted to move out of Manchester United. And for whatever reason, that he's moved to United never really. It was a stop and start, you know, a fiesta sort of signing. Um, and he never really ever hit the ground running in a Man United shirt. He's had some fantastic performances in and around that Borussia Dortmund team where he was absolutely majestic last season, got all the way to a Champions League final. The flair he's got, he's dribbling on the ball, he's footballing IQ. He really is a top, top player. And it now gives Chelsea so many attacking options with Jadon Sancho, Mudrik, Madueke, Pedro Neto, Jackson, Palmer, Neto. It really does give them abundance of attacking options. And on paper now, Chelsea probably have one of the best attacks in Europe just because the options they have got at their disposal. And I think that was a, that was a good bit of business um, for, um, for going to be honest, for Chelsea. Now, another signing that got done within the last week of the window was Federico Chiesa. Now, obviously, a lot of Liverpool fans unhappy with their transfer window. They, of course, um, wanted to see a DM come through. And there is Federico Chiesa 
in the Liverpool shirt, smiling, happy. He said it's a dream come true. He brings a wealth of experience as well. And look, you look at Liverpool's attack now with Jota, Salah, Nunes, Diaz, and Federico Chiesa, as well as, you know, Cody Gakpo. It gives them abundance of options. Liverpool, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think had the best transfer window um, they've ever had. Of course, they wanted to bring in a number six. We know that. Um, Arsenal had, a, a, a in, in respective to where they are in the league, I think they had a good transfer window. Um, I don't think it was a 10 out of 10, but like I've said previously, you don't always have to have a 10 out of 10 window. Manchester City didn't have a 10 out of 10 window. They only brought in Gundogan and, and Savinho. But on the balance of these three signings, which I've highlighted, Jaden Sancho, Raheem Sterling, or Federico Chiesa, I think at £10.7 million, you cannot look past how good of a signing that is for Liverpool for Federico Chiesa. That is an absolute steal for someone who has won, you know, some of the biggest trophies out there. He's won league titles. He has won a Euro in which he was arguably the standout player for £10.7 million, bringing him in, you know, to Liverpool, who can play on the right, who can really rotate and rest the likes of Mohamed Salah, similarly to what Raheem Sterling can offer Arsenal with Bakayo Saka. You know, he, he's walked in Federico Chiesa. He signed a four-year contract until 2028. He can His natural position is on the left, but he can play on the right and as a, as a second striker or as a false nine. You look at Raheem Sterling, he can play on the left, he can play on the right. Very versatile, as well as Jaden Sancho. I think all three signings, respective to the clubs they're going to, are going to be good bits of business. But if I'm looking at it logistically and logically, I think the best bit of business, I don't think you can look past Raheem Sterling. The fact that there's no loan fee, the fact that Chelsea are paying more than 50% of his wages, the fact that he's a 12-month straight loan, so if it doesn't work out, he then becomes a Chelsea player, is fantastic business. Federico Chiesa on a four-year deal at £10.7 million transfer fee, around €12 million, Euros, is an unbelievable bit of business. As if, I, if I was going to rank them, I would go Sterling and Chiesa on a par, and then I would go Jaden Sancho. Because I think Jaden Sancho, I think there's a lot more of a gamble with signing Jaden Sancho. I'm not saying that he is anywhere a, a, a bad player by no... no not a bad player by no stretch of the imagination. I think he is a very, very uh, top, top player. But I think there's a little bit more risk when you look at signing someone like Jaden Sancho because he hasn't really got a, a fantastic record in, in the Premier League. And when you look at the fact that um, Federico Chiesa uh, has, has got a good record in Italy, he then comes over. That injury record probably... Do you know what? I'm going to go Sterling, Chiesa, Sancho only because of Chiesa's injuries. But on the balance of it, it's three good bits of business. You look at Chelsea as well. They got Pedro Neto for 60 million euros. Another great bit of business. Um, alongside Cole Palmer, alongside Jackson, Chelsea really have got attacking options for days in their team. They really do have bundles of attacking options. They really do. Let us know your thoughts down below with regards to... Raheem Sterling, Jaden Sancho, or Federico Chiesa? Who was the best bit of transfer business out of those three? Um, obviously, there's a lot of Premier League football on today. We'll have a match reaction out for Arsenal versus Brighton and the West Ham versus Manchester City. Tomorrow, watch along on the main channel for Newcastle versus Spurs. And then a match reaction back on here for Man United versus Liverpool. But I'm, I'm actually somewhat, re not relieved, but I'm somewhat happy that the the transfer window is closed and now we can kind of get back to some normality of Premier League football. But then what do you know? There's an international break in, in in a week or so. So it's it's going to be very, very interesting this weekend. Um, Premier League football, I'm going to do score predictions very, very quickly. I think Arsenal will beat Brighton 3-0. I think Manchester City, West Ham will be 2-1 City. I think Chelsea will beat Crystal Palace 3-0. I 
I think Liverpool, Man United will be 2-2. And I think Spurs will beat Newcastle 2-1. But look, we are going to wrap up. Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you have subscribed. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching. 